Today we're going to learn about four of the best tools to cut out images in Photoshop. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brandon from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're going to talk about one of the most popular things in Photoshop and that is cutting out images and removing backgrounds. There is a ton of different tools that you can use to do this, however there are a few that are more useful than others. In this tutorial I'm going to share four of the best ones that you can use and at the end we're going to go through an example that we use multiple tools together to refine the selection and create a perfect cutout. So with that let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's all done. So for our first example, we are going to talk about the quick selection tool, and this has been a long time popular tool in the Photoshop program throughout all the years. So this tool is very simple. It basically works like the brush tool, except it paints the selection rather than a color. So to access that quick selection tool, all you have to do is click on the quick selection option right here, or you can press W on your keyboard. With that tool selected, we'll then click on the new selection option select the layer that we want to cut out, and then we'll just start to paint over the area that we want to cut out. In this case, it's the sky. And depending on how similar the colors are or how much contrast is in your photo, it might automatically snap to all the edges like it just did in this example. However, it's not uncommon for something to happen like this, where it selects an area or a couple areas that aren't what you want to cut out. And in that case, you can easily refine that edge by holding the Alter Option key and notice how that icon changes to a minus inside of the cursor here. So that's holding Alter Option with the minus and then this is the regular brush with the plus. So holding Alter Option, having that minus icon there, and then we can just paint over those areas we want to get rid of and Photoshop will do its best to snap to the edges it thinks you want instead. And it does a pretty good job to quickly refine those edges. You don't need to try too hard for this. And then you now have a nice selection around your building or your subject or whatever else you're trying to cut out. Now the opposite is true and let's say you have too much selected of a certain area. You can then just make sure that the plus option is selected with your cursor. Again this is going to be the default option but if you aren't sure you can just go up to your settings bar and click it right here. And then from there you can just paint over those areas you want to add back in and it's going to refine that selection back down to the edge that you are wanting. So around your subject, in this case my building. So with that all done, your selection is ready to go. To cut out the image non-destructively, we're going to click on the layer mask icon. That's going to apply that selection onto a layer mask, and in this case it's the opposite of what we want. So we'll click on that layer mask and press Command or Control I to invert that mask, and now we have cut out the image. Now these same steps apply whether you're cutting out a person, a building, a car, or whatever else you're trying to cut out. The quick selection tool is a great tool to quickly and easily cut out images with not a ton of work involved. So that is the first tool for cutting out images and now let's talk about the pen tool. Now the pen tool is perfect for making custom and refined selections around an edge, especially when you need to be specific like cutting out a person or there's like a busy background and the edge is hard to distinguish, then the pen tool is going to be a super easy option for you. So to access the pen tool you can press P on your keyboard or you can find it right here in your toolbar and then we're going to make sure the option here is set to path. From there the tool works very simply. If you click once it's going to add a little box and this is called an anchor point. And if I click again it's going to add another anchor point. Between those two points is a line that we call a path and this path is what we use to basically create our selection. So as you continue on to create your path, which is those blue lines there, you're basically creating an outline that you eventually want your selection to become. So let's just go as an example here, go and connect that around. So now I have a complete path. With that I could then right click and go to make selection and it's going to convert that path into a selection for me. So now you kind of get the idea of where this is going. Now if you notice when you click it only creates straight lines between each anchor point. So how do you curve a line? Because obviously in this case we're going to need to do a lot of curving to get around this building. In that case when you click to add an anchor point you just click and hold and then when you're holding down your mouse you can drag out to adjust that path. 
Then you see these two arms out here, those are called the control arms. Those can be adjusted individually by holding the alter option key and clicking on the one control arm you want to adjust. So in this case, since I want to adjust the curve on this side, I'll select the control arm on that side as well. So holding alter option and clicking on that control arm, I can then just adjust that one side while the other end remains untouched. So to give you a better example, I'm gonna add another anchor point over here and then I'll hold command or control and click on this other anchor point to select it. So now I can hold the alter option key and select this control arm to adjust this side of the path or I can click on this control arm while holding alter option and adjust this side of the path. So that's really useful to know when you're wanting to refine your selection with the pen tool because by adjusting one side rather than both at the same time, it's a lot easier to really nail down where you want that path to be following. So with all that said, let's go and cut out this image. The beauty of the pen tool is that it doesn't matter how complicated the background is or anything like that because as long as you can see the edge, then you're able to select it. So let's say I want to cut out along this part up here and then around to that end. I want to cut out basically this half of the building and the sky. So I'll start by zooming in and adding an anchor point just on the outside of my edge like so. And then I'll click along somewhere here, add another anchor point and drag out to curve that anchor point like so. Now as you see, it doesn't quite get the job done what I'm wanting, so I'll hold Alter Option and continue to drag out that curve until it matches up with the edge a little bit better. So by dragging out, you can definitely get a lot more of a customized curve to your path rather than just having short control arms. From there, I'll continue on clicking out to this point here, dragging out, and then again, I can hold Alter Option, click on that control arm and refine that path like so. I'm not gonna select this one dark area here, so I'll hold Alter Option, move that control arm out of my way click in the corner like so. And then from there, I'll continue to drag out, add more anchor points along the top. And then when there is a straight line, you obviously don't need to curve it. So you can just click between the two points, add that anchor point in and you're ready for action. And then if you ever have trouble with matching your path to an edge, you can always add more anchor points because when there's a lot of changes in angle, you need to add an anchor point at every time your edge changes positions. Otherwise, if you don't have a nice constant edge, like in this example, then you won't be able to just have a general curve that stretches over a wide space. You'll need to use a bunch of anchor points to refine that path a little bit better. No matter what kind of edge you're cutting out, it all ends up working the same. It's just clicking and dragging, adjusting those control arms to where you want them to go, and then continuing around your image. Now, one thing that I should also mention is that where you put your control arms is very useful. If you leave your control arm pointing in the direction you want it to go, as well as aligning it with the edge, because because I find that if I have the control arm way over here for some reason and then I go to add another anchor point, it's going to mess up my path. So if I make sure that that next control arm is pointing where I want to go, it's along the edge I want, it's going to help to line that path along the edge that I'm trying to cut out. Now in this case, you see that I accidentally placed an anchor point a little bit too low, and in that case, you can hold Command or Control, click on that anchor point, and now you can move that point all together. So I'll just reposition that so it's in a better spot on the edge, refine that control arm, and then finish off my path like so. From there, I will go around the outside of my canvas, so I'm not gonna be getting rid of any other information around the edge, and connect back to the starting anchor point like so to complete the path. From there, since I wanna cut out this image, I wanna turn it into a selection by right-clicking, going down to Make Selection, check off Anti-Alias to make sure New Selection is checked off, and my feather radius is set to zero pixels. I'll click OK, and now I have an active selection. Just like before with our Quick Selection tool, we can select the layer we want to cut out, click the layer mask icon, and now our image is cut out. The beauty of the pen tool is that because you are the one that's picking where the edge is, there's not a lot of fringing or any refinements that need to be done because you already spent the time to go right against the edge, make a nice clean selection, and all your work is done. So that is the pen tool. This is an amazing tool to use against complicated edges or cutting out people, or when you just really need to make sure that you have a perfect selection around something. So with that, 
let's hop into our next example, which is the select color option. So the select color range option in Photoshop lets you select a certain color and turn that into a selection based on that one color. So in this example, since I have a bunch of blue sky, I'm gonna select all of the blue in the image to cut out these palm trees. This is an amazing tool to use if you're shooting in a studio or you have a solid colored background behind your subject because then you don't have to use any other complicated tools. You can just select the color of the background that you want to remove and then it's gonna do all that for you. So to access this tool, we'll go up to select and down here to color range, making sure that the layer we want is highlighted, of course, and then our color range option will appear here. Now what I like to do is set my selection preview to none and then have this option checked off to selection. From there, I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and I'll click on the color I want to sample. So in this case, that blue, and notice how it now has that white line. So just like a layer mask, the white is gonna be 100% visible while the black is gonna be 100% transparent. But in terms of making a selection we basically just want to have the area that we don't want to be white and the area that we do want to be black and then we'll invert it later on on our layer mask now obviously if I just keep clicking around it's selecting different blues but obviously it's not going to select all of the blues at once so what you can do then is hold the shift key this and notice how I have the plus icon beside my cursor or you can click on the plus icon here either or works with that done holding the shift key or clicking here you can continue to sample different colors and it's going to add to that selection area taking care not to select any of this yellow or the green that is in my palm trees here i'll continue going through until all of that looks white and then i can even go to my selection preview and change my image to grayscale so i can better see what's going on here so as you notice there's a little area in here that isn't quite working and now that's all checked off and refined. Going back to none, since I mentioned that white is 100% visible while black is 100% transparent, this is obviously the opposite of what we want. The only reason that we did this is because the blue is easier to sample than all of the green in the trees. So with this all complete and you're happy with your selection, you can then go and adjust the fuzziness as your last thing. And this is going to basically shift how much tolerance there is between different colors. So this will help to remove any fringing or just make the edges of your selection a little bit softer and more realistic. I like to keep mine as a default somewhere between 30 and 50, but it's totally up to you and it depends on the image you're using. Rather than having to invert this selection later on on the layer mask, I can just click this invert option and it's gonna switch those colors around for me. So now my palm trees are visible while the sky is gonna be transparent. Clicking okay, it'll now turn that into an active selection. I can click on the layer mask icon to add that onto a layer mask. And now my palm trees are cut out because I sampled the blue and then I inverted that selection in the color range dialog box. So then I didn't have to do any extra stuff later on on the layer mask. This is a definite lifesaver, especially if you're working in studios where you have a solid background against your subject or something like that. Definitely make sure to remember the select color range option. Now for the last option, we're gonna talk about the channels. And the channels is perfect for cutting out complicated edges such as the hair, because going through all of the tools that we've just discussed in this tutorial, the quick selection tool isn't gonna do a good job to cut out these complicated edges. The pen tool, unless you wanna spend a lifetime going around all of this curly hair, you're probably not gonna to wanna to do that either. And then this select color range tool isn't going to work necessarily as well because there are a bunch of different hues that aren't necessarily the same and also the same hues that are in the background show up in his shirt so then we're going to have a lot of problems there however since there is so much contrast between his hair and his body versus the background we can use the channels option to cut out this image. Now the channels option can be found right here beside your layers, it's in a different tab. And going through, you have three different channels for red, green, and blue. Each of these channels represents a different color channel in your image, and depending on your photo, they'll have different levels of contrast. So going through all of these, the idea here is you wanna find the one that has the most contrast between your subject, what you wanna cut out, and the background. So going through these, you notice that the blue channel by far has the most contrast between him and the background. So what we wanna do is use this contrast to create a selection. And obviously right now, it's not super contrasty. We want this to be basically black and white. So what we'll do is we'll click on that blue channel and drag down to the new layer icon down here to duplicate it. Again, depending on the photo you're using, you may be using a different channel than me. However, all the steps from here on out after you copy that channel are the exact same. With that blue copy channel selected, press Command or Control L to access your levels. And now we can add more contrast to this channel. So I'll drag up the shadows here to darken up him and his hair and all that stuff. And then I'll lighten up the highlights to 
get rid of that background and all of that stuff. Now, the thing you notice here is his shirt is becoming white as well, and in this case, there's no avoiding that. However, we'll talk about some easy ways to get that back in later on. For now, we just wanna focus on his hair. So zooming in, just get a better look. I wanna make sure that all of his hair is pretty nicely selected. There's no noticeable dark areas that I don't want selected in that area. But for now, this looks pretty good to me. And then I'll click OK. From here, there are a lot of areas on his face that aren't fully black, so that means they're not gonna be fully selected. And to help adjust that, we can grab our brush tool and pressing B, and then we can set our foreground color to black, and we can start to paint over those gray areas that we want to select again. So in this case, I'm just gonna be painting over his face so that we're making sure that everything in that area is gonna be selected as one, and there's not gonna be any weird things going on later on. Now, as for his shirt, there's not a whole lot we can do about that one. However, we can do a little something to get rid of these light gray areas. I talk about this in my other tutorial all about how to cut out complicated images in Photoshop, but it basically follows the same premise. With your brush tool selected, change your blending mode from normal to overlay, and now it's only gonna affect those gray areas. So since I want these to be white, I'm gonna change my foreground color to white, and I'll paint over those areas, and it's just gonna mask that out without actually affecting any of the black areas here. So this is a really simple way to refine that edge without having to be super specific. As long as you have a dark versus a light edge or light gray, this is a perfect way to do it. Again, I highlight all this stuff in my other tutorial that you can find by clicking the card in the top corner right now. So from here, we now wanna turn this into a selection and we can do that by holding Command or Control and clicking on the channel copy thumbnail like so, and that's gonna turn that into an active selection for us. We'll then go to our layers panel and then select the layer we want to cut out and click on the layer mask icon. Press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask and now we have our image cut out. As you see, the hair is looking pretty darn good to me, but obviously we have a problem with his t-shirt. Now to add things back in, all we have to do is use our brush tool by pressing B, make sure that mode is set to normal, and then since we wanna add stuff back in, we're gonna make sure that foreground color is set to white and we can just start to paint stuff back in like so. Now the trouble is, this is pretty easy and straightforward to do, except once you get to the edges of your subject, it starts to become quite hard to perfectly select them like that. So now I'm gonna show you an easy way to use some of the other methods that we already talked about to help refine this selection. So the idea here is I'm just going to go a little bit on the outside of his shoulders. So we'll, we are gonna see a bit of the background, but it's not a big deal, because we're gonna now use a different selection method to refine that edge for us. In this case, since we have a nice clear edge, I'm gonna use the quick selection tool. I'm gonna access it just by pressing on the tool up here, or you can press W. And now I'll just paint around his shoulders to add that selection in, and it's going to make a really clean selection around there. I can hold the shift key, and now make a separate selection just on the other side of his shoulder. And then with that layer mask selected, since black is my background color, I'm going to press Command or Control and Delete to fill that selection with the background color, which in this case is black. And now that gets rid of those areas for me and I don't have to do any fancy brush adjustments, I don't have to make a pen tool adjustment or whatever, the quick selection tool has done everything for me. Now from here, the last thing you can do is hold Alt or Option, click on your layer mask and double check that everything is looking the way it should. And what we're looking for is that there isn't any black areas within the subject because that would indicate transparency. So in this case, we have two transparent spots on his shoulders. So I'll grab my brush tool, make sure my mode is set to normal, make sure white is set to my foreground color, and then I can just paint over those areas like so to make them visible once again. From there, I'll hold Alt or Option to click on that layer mask, go back to my regular view. And now my subject is cut out using the channels to cut out his hair and then the quick selection tool to go around his shoulders. So you can use any of these methods together to create perfect selections, but each one will have their own pros and cons. So just remember the advantages of one versus another when you're trying to use the two together. Okay guys, so that is how to cut out images in Photoshop, and those are four of the best tools that I love to use every day in my photo editing work. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button, and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Now, if you're all about making these selections, then make sure to check out my other tutorial on the easiest ways to make selections. In that tutorial, I'll talk about some of the fastest ways to cut out photos, including a literally one-click method that you won't want to miss out on. So you can find that via the link in the description below, or hitting the card up in the corner right now. So with that, my name is Brandon from BeWellCreative.com. I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. And so I shall see you then. Catch you later.